everyone, and welcome to Riverfront Plaza in Jacksonville, Florida, home of skate legends from Clyde Singleton and Neil Minns to the 80s, Buck Smith and beyond. And today it's the site of the SLS Super Crown World Championship presented by Karayuma. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm Paul Zitzer, along with the 2000 Skater of the Year and all-around street chopper, Jeff Rowley. Jeff absolute crazy huge weekend here in Jackson. Yeah, we've got a crazy weekend ahead of us. I mean, this is a great skate park, very technical skate park, and all these guys are going to be battling out for one of those top four spots into the finals. That's right. Today is the last chance qualifier. Skaters trying to make a four cut. And here we're taking a look at the current season standings. You see those top four skaters in gold on the top of your screen there. Nigel Houston, Felipe Gustavo, Alex Midler, and Gustavo Ribeiro. They, they don't have to skate today. They are already pre-qualified into tomorrow's final. So today, it comes down to all the skaters trying to make it into that final and join them. Felipe Mota. Yeah, it's a technical course, uh, Paul. We mentioned that, and it's going to favor certain guys like Felipe Mota. Fast feet, technical moves, very technical tricks. Guys like Felipe, I think, are going to do good. It's a good course for this final event of the year, I would say. It's going to put a level standing for everybody, but it's definitely going to favor the 10 and the NAR. Shane O'Neill, guys like that. Guys that can do 10 tricks in a space that a normal guy can only do five. Uh, so, lots to look forward to today. I really I look forward to it. It's going to be a huge day of skateboarding here in Jacksonville. First, let's take a look at how this contest works with the basics brought to you by Tech Deck. There are two sections to street lead. There's the line section where each skater gets one 45 second run, followed by the single trick section. Four single trick attempts from everyone, and the top three scores count from any section, and the top four skaters advance into tomorrow's final. So Jeff, we have four heats on the day, best skateboarders in the world vying for four spots. That is a harsh cut. If you look at these heat lists, I mean, best skaters in the world, it, there's... It's anyone's game, Paul. Back. Anyone's game today out there. And now it is time to meet the skaters in heat number one. Happy to have this guy back, the flying Frenchman, Aurelien Giroux from France. He's, he hasn't been able to get into the country because you already know why, so we're happy to have him here. And we have Zion Wright. Zion's 22 years old. Florida local boy, huge crowd here for him today. Everyone's screaming. Yeah, the crowd loves Zion. And of course, Dominic Walker. He's a wild card this year. Brand new SLS Pro. He got seventh at the Tour Qualifier. He's trying to make his first SLS final here in Jacksonville. Manny Santiago. Manny is no stranger to Street League. 36 years old. Incredible skateboarder. Great attitude. Tori Podwell. He's a founding SLS pro going all the way back to 2010. He's looking for his first ever win still. He could get it. And then Alec Majerus coming from Minnesota. Alex, very technical. T he, talk about tech in the knob right there. Alec Majerus. Just a raw street skater. Needs to get it done here on the course, and he can do it. So we're not going to mess around and waste any time, Jeff. We're going to get straight into it. We have a great crowd out here. Skate crowd. They're feeling it already. The sun is out. Skaters are warmed up. Aurelian Girard is going to be the first skater in. We can trace his history back to, I trace it back to 2015 when he won Tampa Am. Boom, out of nowhere. There he was, and he's been killing it ever since. And then he got sixth this year in Tokyo, which is a big deal, because that was the Olympics. He's in the final. And if you pay any attention to him on Instagram, you can see him flying around constantly. He's in for his line. Wow, coming in very hot right there, big alley front center. Not a big spin back, he's got a lot of tricks. 
A big old hot flip. And I don't like to be like, I don't like to say like, this course is too small for him. But this dude goes so huge. Oh! Doesn't quite get the kickflip backside lip slide. There isn't that one thing here that he could just go completely sailing across the course on. He can go big off of that. Oh! Full speed 360 flip. Oh, gone for the hot flip, late kick flip, late foot foot flip. Wow, he came out smoking right there. He's a. You're going to see a nice visible replay. Here's that solid hard flip, caught and turn. You can see the nice catch right here. Boom. Coming out hot. Yeah, he was, he was hustling, packing the tricks in. One fall. The judges need to set the correct tone here with this score. Seven, zero for Aurelia. That, that one fall right at the start of the line never helps, does it? Does not. He made up for it, but one line over and out before moving on to single tricks. Zion Wright in next. Winner of Phoenix Am 2016. He took it from there. 2018 SLS pick. He's been in one final. Trying to get back there. Let's get to lip slide. Be nice, it's interesting to see if he can do a pull of 540 out for us. Ooh, I love it. He can throw those around like nothing. Oh, going for that nose grind transfer. That is a scary looking obstacle. It's a sketchy obstacle, is yeah. what that is. Floating flat bar on top of a quarter pipe. Back to the nose grind, a little bit shaky coming out. Backside tail. tail. It's going to be last trick here for Zion. Solid backside 360 only. Now, some falls hurt worse than others. The one, like for him on the quarter pipe, it completely took him off his line. Kind of seems like right. nice come back. Sick. Beautiful. Just messing about right down there. There's a gap to Smith crying. It's a solid frontside blunt on the quarter pipe. He's got street and transition skills. And there's that bail on the nose grind that just got away from him. That backside 360 just to finish it out. Four point two for Zion in his line. Dominic Walker up next. He's a wild card. Brand new to SLS this year. Trying to make his first final. Oh. Always tough, missing that first trick, going for that back, Smith just slipped out. Dominic might need to just slow it down just a little bit. Just get that rhythm good. Whoa. <laughs> to nose grind. Was that a nose grind or nose yeah, one? I couldn't I see. I think it was nose grind. He's <laughs> fighting the landings, but... Hey, rolling counts for a lot. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe slow it down. Take a breath. That's going to be it. Dominic Walker in the run section. Great to see him out there skating. There's that gap out. Looks right down into the nose grind. Pinches it in. Just about gets away with it. <laughs> A for effort. Amazing. 2.3. Judge is not feeling it. False. You gotta stay on. You gotta stay on. That's all there is to it. Manny Santiago coming in. Placed 19th in the Olympics. 
Jack's been an SLS Pro since 2013. Oh, that's not like Manny to miss that one. Kick for 50-50. You can do that in sleep, I think. I feel like Manny's hot or cold. He's either making everything or we'll see. Hopefully he picks it up and starts making everything. That's impossible in a kick flip. Mm. Oh. Contest blues. Doesn't quite lock into that 50-50. Come on, Manny, pick it up. Oh, going for the kick flip 5-0. Just lost it right there. I think that first trick really got in his head a little. And it's never good to bail the 50 50, right? Like always lose that speed, lose the rhythm. But we've talked about this before, Jeff. With this new format, you get one chance at the line. If you mess it up, that's it. You can move on to single tricks. So there you go. Almost be better playing it safe a little bit. In a way, I think you're right, yes. But th on the other hand, you're trying to make a top four cut? No plan it's safe. Go all out, put it down, make it happen. T punts in next. Tori's been at 18 SLS finals. It's been a little while, though. Nice frontside blunt slide. Tori's got a slightly different bag of tricks, I think, from the rest of the guys here. He skates just a little different, you know? Like that, goes for the higher parts, the difficult big tall ledges that all good to get at. That's Tori right there. I love to see it too, he's one of my faves. Huge nolly kick flip. Nice floating backside 360, he just rips away from him. It's gonna be 10 seconds, he might get one more trick in here. Gonna have to get it in there quick. Oh, going for the backside Smith run. So that score is gonna be thrown out the window. It's gonna come down to the single tricks for Tori. There's that beautiful frontside blunt slide to start it out. That nice, cool nolly kick flip. Let's see what the judges think. Not Come on, much. judges. 2.0. 2.0. Good enough for top four. For now. Alec Majeris coming in for his line. He placed third in the tour qualifier this year. That's what got him here. So he knows how to put it together in a contest. And he can skate transition and everything. Oh, yeah. He can, he's that kind of guy, too. He skates gnarly stuff, but he can tone it down and do the same tricks on different obstacles. Oh. Double no, it's fine to the double king. And definitely more of a raw street skater, right? Not necessarily known for like being a polished contest skater, but he can do it. He, and he has done it many times. Oh, he can definitely do it. I mean, he grew up skating those parks out in Minnesota and going to Tampa contests over the years. That's right. Tampa Am winner 2012. Excellent line so far for Alec. Mm. Oh, that trick just getting away from him. He's got those crazy rail tricks, like Jamie Foy. That you got to watch out for that. He really does. Yeah. But he's going to have to look to the single tricks too. A few falls, a few makes. It's a gap to frontside board slide to start the line out. And here's a close up on that locked in, gapped up the nose grind, down across down. Very cleanly executed. Total control of the situation. And that solid kick for 50 50. Six point four for Alec. Not too shabby. Hey, that's a decent score. We hit a couple falls in there. So now for a closer look at today's course, here's Jamie Foy and Rose Wetzlow with the Skater XL course preview. Hey, what's up, Jamie Foy? Hey guys, it's Rose Wetzlow. And we're gonna do the Skater XL course preview. Let's check out the course. Behind us, we got a quarter pipe with like a floating handrail on top of it. It's pretty dope. I still have a lot of cool tricks going down here. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty sick. We got ledges on both sides. It pretty much mirrors on both sides, but it's cool. They go up and they have the higher ledge on top, so people have been getting pretty tricky on those things. Pretty sick. It looks perfect. Yeah. Right now we're at the bottom. It's pretty much the 
main section that you're gonna see pretty much all the tricks go down on the gap to hubba, kink rails, stair set. And what's your favorite uh, obstacle? I'd say the kink, kink rail for sure. Rail. Yeah, and they definitely gave you enough speed here at this course for anything. This is my favorite, the ledge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I practice a lot of ledge uh, skating. There you and go. I think you get perfect speed. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of crazy skating going down. Yeah. It's the last stop, so people are going to be ready to come out here and not hold back. Super so, Crown. Yeah, this ready. Super Crown Jacksonville. All right, guys, this was it for the Skater XL course preview. We really enjoyed you showing the course, and we hope to see you this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a great time. All right, bye-bye. is brought to you by Karyuma, old school shoes, new school ethics. By Monster Energy, proud sponsor of Street League Skateboarding since 2010. By Visible, wireless that is better with friends. And by Skater XL, available now on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. We kicked off the season in Los Angeles with a qualifier where 30 of the best street skaters competed for three open spots to join SLS pros like Nigel Houston and Paul Rodriguez on the 2021 SLS Championship Tour. Our first stop was Salt Lake City where all the SLS pros got a taste of our new format that makes for an exciting showdown in the final. Gustavo Ribeiro and Nigel Houston duked it out, but in the end, Gustavo walked away fulfilling his dream with his first ever SLS win. Then we hit Lake Havasu for stop two. Everyone brought their A-game as they continued to stack championship points to make the top four from the season that advanced straight into the Super Crown Final. Nyjah, Deshaun, and Felipe went in on the final, but with Nyjah hungry for the win, no one could take it away from him. Now it's on at the Super Crown World Championships in Jacksonville, Florida, presented by Cariuma. Nyjah, Felipe, Alex Midler, and Gustavo Ribeiro are the top four from the season locked into the Super Crown Final. The top four from the last chance qualifier joined them to battle it out with one winner being crowned the 2021 Super Crown World Champion. So Jeff, it's been a great year so far and it culminates here in Jacksonville. We're off to a great start. Aurelien Giraud from France up on top after the line section. Heat one of four here in the last chance qualifier. So now we move on to single tricks. And we know Aurelian can, can do a lot. We see it every day. There you go. 360 flip 50. It doesn't look like he's phased by the situation, too. Coming all the way over to the US, straight into this, there's that tray flip 50 50, like it was nothing. There's the other angle right there. See both those trucks lock in nicely. Eight point oh. Highest score of the day so far, no surprise. 360 flip 50. Zion right in next. He's currently in third place, put in a 4.2 in the line. And he can do it all also. Let's see what obstacle he goes at though, what he favors for these. Oh, that was sick, going for the backside 5 -oh, shove it out, I didn't see that coming. No. I want to see it though. I, I mean, he could have just settled with the backside 5 -oh down the double kick, in my opinion. But he's going for a top four spot, he's not messing around. Dominic Walker in. That looked like, uh, I think he was going kick flip front nose. It looked like he went kick flip front crook. We'll see, next try. Manny Santiago in sixth. Had a little bit of a meltdown in the line. He needs to make up for it. Oh! Mm, classic Manny but coming off at the last second. He'll flip very old board slide. Tori, he's in. Looks like he's gearing up. Oh, nice 
Nice backside 360. Clean. Showing the experience Martin. right there. Yeah. Going with what he knows. Get the ball rolling. Get some points. He's got to make up for that run. So no matter what, he has to stay on at least three or four tricks. So that's one. Look how excellent his head placement is while he's spinning 360 right there. No shake in the head. Knows exactly where he's going. 5.8. Solid score. Alec Majerus came off a decent run score. A couple falls. Oh, backside Smith down the double kink. That looked too easy. Smart. Like you said, Jeff, do it. Do what you know. Get you can see how long this is, Paul, not to cut you off nah. there, boy, but you can see how long that rail is from that angle right there. Right. You gotta lock it in. Yeah, it's not a small rail. And it's not super low, too. Not as low as it looks. Alex showing those serious rail skills. Nice 7.1. That'll do it. Good enough for second place for now. So we go back to the top of the order for the second of four single tricks. Aurelian, your leader. Oh! Okay, Jeff, he looks like the skater to beat today. Like, that's what it's going to take. Yeah, he looks very strong on his board. A huge gapped out kick to the front side board slide. That's a good 10-foot gap out. He barely had any room left on the rail to even slide that. Man, look at that control. He was already coming out before he even got in. He knew where he wanted to go. That was beautiful. Eight. Back-to-back -back eights. Way up on top. Almost 10 points in the lead. I think he's setting the standard for everybody else to follow here for the rest of the heats, right? Yeah, but, but to be honest, seven and eight aren't the highest scores in terms of like overall. It might take nines to get into the top four. We'll see. Zion Wright. Oh! Yes! He got sketchy on that and pulled it off. Yeah, he, he almost lost his body weight there. He's got crowd loves it. He's got so much support here from Florida today. There's that backside 5 -0. Almost had to grab the nose and then shove it out. A little sketchy on the body, you know, balance, but the rest of it was clean. Look, clean lock in all the way down. You can see his head dips right here. Look, has to almost grab the nose of the board. Manages to keep that control and then an actual real clean shove it out. Especially like trying to shove it out of a round bar. It's so easy to flip your board halfway over, right? You land up with your board upside down. 7.4, great score for Zion. Dominic Walker on deck. He's in fifth. He needs he needs to make three tricks. Because his run score was a write-off. He's had one fall so far. Oh, that's that's tough because we are not we're not going to see Dominic Walker advance even if he makes his next two most likely because he's just got his run score was too low. It's too bad. All right, Manny Santiago, he's in. Oh, there we go. It is. Beautiful. Classic Manny, varial heel to you name it. Visible replay, varial heel, backboard. He'll take it to back 5-0, he'll take it to nose grind, back nose blunt, back Smith. I really what, like the way he locks in and drops both the rail flat on his board right there. Yeah, no, I mean, there's no question. He knows what he's doing on the varial heel. It's a Manny Classic right there. 8.7, that is huge. But that backside 5 will shove it out, the score that that got, that, to that get, that's a big jump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to question that, doing a backside 5 will across that long rail to shove it out close to that. Should have got a high score. That's just me. Yeah, I... I that's what I'm here for, no? I'm with you. T-Pud. Oh, mm, that was nice. That was very well caught and popped. Yeah, Tori. 
comes out snapping. So Torrey sitting in fifth. It's going to be his third score. He's got a 2.0 and a 5.8. He's adding to that, setting himself up for his last two attempts. But scores aside, that was just a beautiful nolly flip. And as we mentioned, T-Putt's founding SLS pro going all the way back to 2010. He's the only founding SLS pro that's still around who hasn't won yet. He's the only one that's still around without a win. I'd like to see that change. That would be cool. It'd be a good, nice surprise. He's almost won a couple of times. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, Alec Majerus going for that front set crooked grind through the kinker. That would have been wild. Back to the top. Aurelian. He's just on a roll. He's just trying to add to his score right now. His lowest score is a seven even. Get rid of that with anything better. Oh! <laughs> what is going on? He's just stepping right on the gas. Yeah, he is. He's like, get rid, the, get rid of the get rid of all the gears, get rid of all the brakes, just give me some gas. I'm going. Go, full throttle, all in. It looks like he knows he's 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 like, I'm going to do these tricks. It's just a matter of what, what scores I'm gonna get for him when I land. Big old hard flip over the rail. It's a frontside board slide. 10 foot gap into that. Maximum speed also. You know, what What you see with a skater like Aurelian right now is he is just skating his absolute best. 9.5. Okay. So goodbye to his lowest scoring seven. Wow. Aurelian on fire. 25.5. 25.5 overall score right now. Zion Wright sitting in fourth, trying to post his third score. Oh, he sees what's happening. So it's going to come down to his final single trick attempt. He's going to have to really go for it on that last one as well, too, to stand any fighting chance, getting anywhere. Yeah, because he's got a pretty weak run score. Dominic Walker. It's got to stay on. No. Dominic going for the same obstacle, too, just the opposite side. Going for kick flip crook or kick the board, couldn't quite tell. Great to see Dominic out though. Manny essentially needs to make his last two last two tries because his run score was too low. Oh! There you go, Manny getting back into his groove. I think it's the crowd that's juicing him up. Yeah, he he that's like his lifeblood. Mainline and crowd juice. Look how high that nolly flip was as well, too. That was beautiful. It was very well caught. So, Jeff, in my opinion, a nolly flip back 50 on that, that, that might, I mean, that's that's in the ballpark of a varial heel backboard. I, I think it would be harder, actually. If, if I had to do one or the other, which bails for six weeks and then go home with no makes, but still, nolly flip 50, 7.9, huge score. But not up in the burial heel backboard department. Okay, t Pud coming in next. He's in third. Looking to drop a 2.0. Oh! Whoa! That was cool. Now he flipped board slide on the big wide rail like that. A lot of room for error on that yeah. one. So that 2.0 is gonna go. Take another look. Wow. You can see that just pop right over the top. Solid catch. Clean land. Beautiful moves. 8.3. Tori Pudwell moves up into second place. Drops Manny down into third. 
And Alec Majerus currently sitting in fourth place, looking for his, and that's only with two scores, so looking for his third. Oh! So he's going to have to make that on his last attempt, no question. Yeah, he put himself in a difficult position. He was looking so good right, at, right out of the gate. Back to the top of the order. Aurelian Giroux currently sitting in first place. That 9.5 is the highest score of the season, period. That's huge. Hard flip front board, 9.5. What else has he got for us? Wow. Oh. Was he going for a bigger flip or a big spin flip? I think a big spin flip, probably. It, it, it did look like a big spin flip, but he's famous for the bigger spin flip. We'll, we'll maybe see him back in the final if that 25.5 holds through three more heats. You know, he did great skating. 9.5 was huge. The other scores, you know, they're not they're not groundbreaking scores though. So we'll see. Zion Wright coming in next. He's got to move up into the top four. Oh, he's not going to do it. No, didn't quite get his feet in the right spot. So that's all we're going to get from Zion Wright here in Jacksonville. Great showing as always from Zion. And Dominic Walker. This one is for the love and the homies, Jack. Oh! Hey, here's another thing to consider. The top 20 skaters here this weekend or for the season, they get to skate again next year. If you don't finish in the top 20 for the season, you're out. So these results matter a lot. Some hard rules right there. Yeah. Hard lines made. Yeah. Manny Santiago, he's in third. He's trying to add to his score here. And he's not going to do it. So realistically, Manny's score of an 18.4. That's gonna be that's gonna be tough to hold on to a top four spot through the rest of the day. T Pud. He's already up there with a 20.3. He's trying to drop a 5.8. Feeling it out. Oh, go for a huge backside Smith from the flat. Again, a score of a 20.3. Could go either way. Alec Majerus in next. He's in fourth. He's looking for his third score. Needs, needs this make. He needs to play a hammer right now. There it is. Front side crooks through the kinker. Showing the control and balance. He's stoked on that one. There's that slow mo. You can see that lock and pinch in that. He knew right when he got in that one. He was he was coming through. I think those tricks like that are so great because you got to be so committed to it. It's one thing if you flip out to a, like a down hubba, you know, there, there's there's not as much of a level of commitment. When you're going for a front crook down a double kink, hang on. 7.5. 7.5, judges. Alec Majerus in second place. That was gnarly. That was gnarly. I was a little low on that one. And look, his average score right now is only sevens to get him to a 21. So let's take a look at the standings after heat number one, Aurelian Giroux up on top with a 25-5. Alec Majerus and Team Puds rounding out the top three. Manny Santiago there in fourth, that's the bubble. But with an 18.4, that is gonna be tough to hold on to the top four spot with three heats still to come here from Jacksonville.
we're going to throw it down to Andrew Cannon, who's with Manny Santiago. That's right. Manny, you skated solid out there today. You're down in fourth right now. It's obviously a tough cut. But what does it mean to you to be here in SLS? I mean, just in general, to be here in Jacksonville at the Super Crown, SLS means a lot. We've got a beautiful crowd, sold-out crowd, but the best skaters in the world. Like, I mean, I'm happy. You know, I can't, I can't explain that. You know, I'm just excited, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be a part of this. You've done all the contests. You've been doing it forever. Why does SLS differ? Because uh, right now, you know, SLS to me is like, you know, it's like the NBA of skateboarding. It is like the top tier skaters, visually the best, the courses are the best, the crowds are awesome, and it's just being part of such an elite group and knowing that you've worked so hard to be a part of that group. And that's part of your career, and that's something that you look forward to as you, you know, progress in, in skateboarding competitively. Absolutely. All right. Well, who do you want to see make it in there if you're unable to get in there? Who do you want to see get into that top four? Um, honestly, I'd like to see, you know, the boys, Malto, Paul. I'd love to see Mickey Papa. He's got the tricks. Um, anyone, honestly, we're all here. And I, I wish the best to everyone. Awesome. Well, we love you, Manny. Best of luck. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Back up to you, Paul. Thank you, Andrew. Remember, follow us on Instagram, at SLS, for results, highlights, updates, anything happening at SLS. Make sure to follow us on Instagram. Take a look at the overall standings from the season. Those top four skaters in gold are pre-qualified into tomorrow's final. Everybody else is trying to get there. Four spots still open. Deshaun Jordan, Chris Joslin, Jamie Foy, they had, a, they had a great year, didn't quite lock in a spot to the final, but they're still in the mix. Let's take a look now back at Super Crowns over the years. It has been a wild decade and more. Here we go. And this is a victory ride for our overall champion of 2010, Nigel Houston. Now, Sean Malto has been slow to stay. Oh, wow. Sean Malto is our new champion. And this is where he's going to apply the pressure. It's showtime tonight. Nigel Houston is our new 2012 champion. Chris Cole up next. better an 8.2 to increase his lead. Oh, oh and Shane O'Neill is your new Super Crown World Champion. Nigel Houston. We need one more absolute hammer from Nigel. And he does it! And there you have your 2017 Super Crown Champion. Here we go. What's it gonna be? Back. Super Crown wins. Two times defending world champion. Dude. Ho, ho, ho! Nigel Houston, three times back to back to back world champion. We've had a great run at SLS, and welcome back to Jacksonville, Florida. It's Riverfront Plaza, and that shot right there is brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Great view of downtown Jacksonville, and we are right on the river. There's a look at the course. Great work once again by California Skate Parks. And now, it is time. Let's meet our skaters in heat number two here in the last chance qualifier. Carlos Ribeiro, SLS Pro since 2016. Best finish ever was a third place back in 2017 in Munich. Vincent Milou from France, 25 years old.
Oh, Sean Malto, it's so great to have these legends on the course here this weekend. Founding SLS Pro, going back to 2010, and you saw it in the highlights. He was the 2011 world champ, Super Crown. Speaking of legends, Paul Rodriguez, does he even need the intro? Nah, we could just be quiet. Yeah, I think we'll just be quiet on Paul. What an incredible skateboarder. Crowd loves him too. Newer SLS Pro, going back to 2018. Hasn't been in a final since the London Pro Open. Back then, Trent McClung. Tr Trent skate great in the last event. Also a rip yeah. in that last event. He's incredibly consistent. So much board control. I'm blown away by how many skateboarders are out here. Just incredible turnout today. Take a look at the start list for heat number two. Carlos Rivera will be coming in first, followed by Vincent Malou, Sean Malto, P-Rod, and Trent McClung. So the five skaters in heat number two. We have four heats on the day. The top four skaters will advance into tomorrow's final. Carlos Ribeiro coming in for his first line. One and only line. Gap over to backside over crook. Nice crooked grind down the kink. Looking very at peace today, Carlos. Nice nolly cap. The switch back lip. Back tail on the back top part of the bench. That was beautiful. Perfect. I mean, that's the way he skates. He's one of those guys, isn't he? Oh, nice. Switch backside lip slide. Oh, my goodness. And that's a, that will be it. That was an incredible line, Carlos. That was. There's a cleanly locked in crooked grind in the middle of the line. So many tricks he got in there too. And there's that beautiful backside tail slide. Smoothly sliding across the bench. And the variety in this round. And then ending it off with that nolly kickflip 50-50. Yeah. I mean, that, that you couldn't do a better round. What? Everything he did was perfect. Did, did hit all the different parts of the course. Nine club, 9.0. And that is the highest run of the day. Well deserved. Beautifully scored there. Vincent Malou on deck. One of the two French skaters here this weekend. Placed fourth at the Olympics. One trick away from a medal. He's a beast. Nice front side blunt slide. Coming in half cap. Oh. The half cap 5 0. Maybe one mile an hour too quick into that. Oh, just losing a little bit of that rhythm. 20 seconds, still got time to get some heavy tricks in there. Like that one. 180 Ollie over to switch crook. Solid lofty kick flip. This will be the last trick. Oh! Mm. So, Jeff, with this, with the new format, where skaters get one line and only four trick attempts, if, if you mess up on the line and you don't get a good score, then it's so, there's so much pressure to make three out of four single tricks. That's just, it's almost too much. Might be smarter to keep it fairly simple and just get a decent score on the board or... Take that pressure off going into the single tricks, nice kick flip, and then there's that coming in, the half gap crooked grind. Doesn't quite get it, you can see there, a little bit too much weight leaning back. He's upset with himself, he can do those tricks all day long. 2.8, one of those scores, you get thrown out. Sean Malto in next, 2011. Super Crown World Champ, and he's been killing it ever since. He's had ups and downs. Lately, he's been looking amazing. 
He had some injuries a few years back, but he's kind of bounced back from that big time, put out a bunch of street parts since then, and getting back into the contest circuit as well. I think he's spending a lot of time on the real street as well. Sean has been. Nice nolly frontside nose. Everything he does looks good. Got one of the cleanest styles out. Nice back gap to lip slide. Oh! Time for the gap out to the front side crook. That was a great line though. Got a good amount of tricks in there. Taking another look. Classic. There's that gap out. Clean lip slide. You can see how smooth this style is. Just look how little foot movement there is. Yeah. Total control. 2.3. Coming in next, Paul Rodriguez. So great to have him back in SLS. It's been a long break. After 2016, he was out. Starts off with that switch back, so 5 0. Hasn't missed a beat. There's that Nolly Cab. Switch back lip. Moving through the course well. Now he's on the opposite side, so he's covered the whole course. Important too, switch kick flip. Oh, oh that was so close. Flawless line until then, until that fall. See if he can get one last trick in there. Switch flip, one side board slide. Everything he does, just switch back to back to back. I mean, that will be it. This one's just for the crowd. <laughs> Maybe not. Great line there for Paul. Unfortunately, that one 360 flip kind of got away from him, but the rest of it was flawless, like this trick right here. Holy cow. And that smooth switch kick flip. If, if you can do all your tricks switch, and they're hard tricks, I mean, even regular, then you... You're golden. Well, he can do them switch and regular. Yeah. Is... <laughs> and he's so he's so strategic. He's smart. He knows how to skate a contest. He has so much experience. 5.6. He was. I mean, he was one. If he would have made that switch straight flip, I think that score would have been three points higher. Okay, Trent McClung. He's on the course. Now Trent's a guy that can step it up or step it down depending on the size of the, like he can do all of his tricks on little rails and big rails too, right? And he's very technical too. Yeah, I think this course would suit him well though because, because of how technical he is. Fortunately he falls there, he can make up for it. Back so 5-0. It's probably going to be the last trick rolling in. Nice gap to backside lip slide. So it seems like falls are costing a lot of points right now. So if I was advising anyone what to do, I'd just say, just make sure you're doing tricks you're going to make. No matter, even if they're basic, stay on. Because you can be killing it and then fall and then get a terrible score. Because you got to stay on it, because all these guys are too good. There's that nice locked in tail slide and hops out of it. And that final gap to back lip. Good line, but hard when you bail in the middle of the, of the line again, isn't it? It's difficult to recover from that. Yeah, psychologically, and then, not to mention, then you, there's no time left. So you gotta squeeze something in. Don't forget, tune in tomorrow. Watch the finals. Here's your schedule. Sunday at noon Eastern, we're kicking it off at the women's final, and then at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Men's final, we're gonna be crowning men's and women's Super Crown World Champions tomorrow. 
so we recently sat down with P-Rod and asked him what it's like to be back skating here at SLS this year. My name is Paul Martin Rodriguez. I am from Northridge, California. The first time I ever heard about SLS was from Rob Deerdick. I was at his house, asked me if I wanted to be one of the you know guys in the first season. Of course, I was honored to be, and, and I was just happy to be a part of it. I literally dedicated my whole life to skateboarding and to go away and come back and like feel that embrace from not only the fans but from like the actual pro skaters as well. It feels crazy to me. Like the 12 year old me would like, not understand that that could happen. Like I just wanted my spot in skateboarding. I'm here today. Like having gone to Salt Lake City and seeing the level of skating that's going on and being a part of that and like feeling those nerves again that I like became unused to. It was very humbling. You know, I didn't expect to come in and like be back at the top of the list. Of course not, but I just, just seeing where everyone was at was just let me know like, all right, man, They're like, cool, you came back from your injury and you're feeling healthy, that's nice, but like, there's a lot more work to do. If I wanna get back onto podium positions, like I got a lot, a lot of ground to cover. It's a new challenge that like I'm looking forward to and I'm, I'm up to the challenge. How does it feel to take an SLS when it feels euphoric? Uh, it's really hard to do. It's really, really hard to do in my experience. Anytime I've won it, it's been a combination of like lots of practice, lots of dedication and luck. What a, what a legend, P-Rod on the course. He's one of only 10 stop winners in SLS history. Only 10 people have ever won. Pretty amazing. Current standings, after one heat in the line section of heat two, Aurelian Giro up on top, Majerus, Teapot, Manny Santiago, th those are your top four skaters that would currently be advancing to the final tomorrow. But that's all possible to change, because we have two and a half more heats still to come. This is heat number two here in the last chance qualifier of the 2021 SLS Super Crown World Championship presented by Karyuma. Single trick section coming up for heat two. Carlos Rivera will be the first skater in. Each skater gets four single trick attempts. Carlos Rivera is currently in sixth place. Coming off a run score of nine. So he set himself up really nicely. That means he only needs to make only, only, I'm saying, Jeff, two out of four tricks. Of course, they're going to be hard, so that's, that's still a tall order. It's tough, but he's sitting in a good spot, though. In a great spot. did that. He just did that. Switch front side, blunt slide, through the double king. And as you were saying, Jeff, that rail is taller than it looks. That was beautiful. So coming off a nine in the run section, following it up with a switch front blunt through a double king. How about that? Hops out just a hurt early on that, but it's a good 16 foot slide on that rail. Cleanly done. Total control in that. If the judges don't give that one a rip roaring score, I'm going to go down there and change the score myself. 8.5. 8.5. So Carlos moving on up. He's in fifth. And that's with only two scores. Vincent Malou in next. Vincent Malou up next. His run score was not so great. So he's going to want to make. Three out of four tricks to give himself a shot at the top four. Oh, wow. Beautiful. That's what he's got to do. Kick, flip, front, lift. That's signature. Signature Vincent Miller. You can see the sheer speed he was going at that. And even he flicks with power. He doesn't have this, like, finesse. He, I mean, it's finesse also, but it's power. Yep, absolutely, Paul. Beautiful. I see it.
8.7. Beautiful. Vincent moves up into seventh place. And Sean Malta on deck. Last time he was in a final was 2017. He's going to have to make three or four to get back there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Gap the backside over crook. There's that nice locked, locked in over crook, actually back gaps out to it. And it got a little loose. He manages to hang on. That was nice. Alto. 7.7. .7. Solid score. He's got to make two more. Paul Rodriguez on deck. So we saw a great run from him with one fall. That was only good for a 5-6. He's got to put down some, some bangers here. Oh, yes. Nice switch 360 flip. That's not a trick you see Paul do a lot down those gaps, right, in contests. That's great to see that. He did it so well, too. Perfect. Clean. I mean, there's nothing that says that switch other than you know he's a goofy footer. That's it. I mean, it is perfection. Even, even if he was a regular footer, he'd get a good score for that 360 flip. Well, he's an absolute pioneer of that, of that, that style of forward and backward skating, you know? Yeah, like he learned to, to change the shoulders to the other direction. It's rare. 7.9. Ball creeps up to sixth. Trent McClung on deck. Trent coming off a 4.1 in the line section. Really, he's going to need three big tricks. He's definitely got the technical side of it. Keep going for the kick the crook on that one. So, I mean, that's that's what we're talking about. So he has he struggled a little bit in the run section and then falls on one trick. And now he has to make three hammers in a row or go home. That's it. It's a harsh, it's a it's a harsh format. Very little room for for any falls. Carlos Ribeiro coming in in fifth place. Anything better than a one is gonna move him into the top four. Oh, mm, that would have been it. Going so, for the clean switch crook. Manny Santiago from heat number one is on the bubble in fourth. He's going to be the first one out. Vincent Malouf in eighth. Needs a seven or better to move into the fourth place spot. Oh, kick with the board slide fakie. Again, just aggressive with the flick. Look at this catch right here, look. Boom, big old catch and then takes it to fakie. It's cool that he catches it so high above the rail and you'd think he would then want to come out forward but then controls it and is able to rip out Fakey. 8.0. Vincent Malou moves into fourth and Manny Santiago is packing his bags. He's out. We still love you, Manny. Sean Malto in next. He's got to make a few more tricks. Yeah, just slipped out of that feeble. Attempting to switch feeble through the kink. So P-Rod will be coming in next. He's in seventh. Put down the switch tray for 7-9. Where does he go next? 
I think he's gearing up down the same, either hover or, or gap. Well, he's coming in switch. We know that one. Oh! oh switch backside big spin. That's a rare one. We saw him do the switch backside flip in Lake Havasu. Thought he was going back for that, but nope. Switch back biggie. So now he's going to have to make his next two tries, no matter what. Trent McClung. All right, so Trent's in, in the unenviable position of having to make three in a row, period. Yeah, it's going to be pretty much decided on this first one right here, whether this is of standard right or he makes it. Wow, that was so perfect. Solid kick for Crooker Grind. So he, he didn't get... Uh, too sketched out by the pressure there. No, very cleanly locked in, popped out. No extra movement. The arms down. Yeah, almost zero compression coming out. He didn't need to. So Trent doing what he needed to do there. 7.4. Just need a little bit more of that. Needs two more of those. He's got that all day. So back to the top of the order. Carlos Ribeiro in sixth place. He's got a nine and an 8.5. So he set himself up really well. He needs one more out of these next two. Yeah! Wow. wow, he was fighting that from the second he got on it. And then by the time he landed it, perfect. Locks him beautifully, let's switch crook. Actually, almost looked like he was going to take it over the other side. You have to, if you watch right here as he's pushing down, watch him push down. Boom, up. That's why he almost lost control right there. Wow. Rail speeds up for a second. Switch crook down the double kick. That is going to be a huge score. So, a 2.1 moves him into the top four. And in fact, an 8.3. Gets him the lead. Ariel and Giroux just got bumped down into second place. Now, Vincent Malou just got bumped to fifth. T Putt is in fourth. Okay, Vincent Malou. Grind reverb. Vincent getting it done. That was gnarly to reverb backside out of that um, high hover. Coming in, locks in, comes out a little bit early. Beautiful half cab. Almost went over crook and almost, almost went to back lip too. Okay, so T Pud on the bubble with a 20.3. Vincent only needs a 3.7 to change that. 8.4, good enough for third place, but a strong third place there. So Teapot is out. So Vincent, after a 2.8 in the run section, came back with an 8.7, 8.0, and an 8.4. Sean Malto coming in. Mm. Paul Rodriguez coming in next in seventh place. High and up. Switch gap. Is it the switch back biggie again? A 7.6 or better moves him into the top four. Alec Majerus is now the bubble skater in fourth. Gets it. Switch backside big spin. That was epic. The control. That's one of those tricks. Not that many people do it because it's very, very awkward. Very awkward. Take a look at the visible replay here. Switch back biggie. 
much control. He just places the board back under his feet. Classic P Rod. A 7.6 moves him into fourth. 8.3. Yes, that's what we want to see. Alec Majerus just got bumped out of tomorrow's final. And P Rod is hanging on to a bubble spot there with a 21.8. Trent McClung back in. He's got to make this. Perfect. Okay. Playing solid kickflip 50-50. So he's he's doing what he can do. Kickflip 50. He did the kickflip crook. He's got two makes in a row. Setting himself up for the last drive. It's looking like to get into the top four, you're going to have to be in the mid 20s to even stand a fighting chance. Yeah. I think with where it's lining out. Right, because you see P Rod in fourth, but he's about, you know, he's three points or more below Vincent in third. We got two heats still to go with plenty of rippers coming. Carlos Ribeiro back in, current leader. 25.8 is his overall score. He's just trying to add to that. He would have done it. So the question is now, does that score hold up through the next two heats? It's likely. No guarantees. Vincent Malou coming in, needs an 8.8 .8 or better to move into first place. He's trying to get rid of an 8.0. Oh! I think he was trying to lock in and go fakey on that one. Front side flip, lip slide fakey, and that's going to be a no score. So Vincent is going to have to hope that that 25.1 holds up through the next two heats. Sean Malto. Intense. It's essentially out. This one's for the homies. It's for all of the great skateboarders in the crowd today. All the local skaters. Appreciate you coming out. Nice switch feeble attempt for Sean. It's going to be it for Sean. Always good to see him out there ripping. Always easy on the eyes. Smooth as it gets. So Paul Rodriguez in fourth place. He's trying to drop a 5.6. So anything better than that is going to help him out a lot. That's the key, is making the trick, getting rid of the 5.6, and increasing his points. Doesn't get it done. So he's going to have to settle for the 21.8. He knows, though. Yeah, he knows. He left it out there. Trent McClung, final skater of heat number two. Final best trick attempt. Ne needs a 9.1 to crack into the top four. Oh, went for it. Yeah, Trent. Good showing from all the skaters here in heat number four. This is the last chance qualifier from the SLS Super Crown World Championship presented by Kariuma. Standings after two heats. Carlos Ribeiro, Aurelian Giroux, Vincent Malou, and Paul Rodriguez in the top four spots. Those four skaters will be skating tomorrow unless the next two heats change it all up, which there's a good chance. 
So far, so good, Jeff. Lots of great skating, but we're seeing a lot of falls are costing some skaters. It's all about staying on, doing hard tricks. It's a tough task with very little room for error here with the new formula. So Paul Rodriguez in fourth place. His score is a 21 8th. Vincent Malou in third with a 25.1. There's a huge gap there. We're going to see if Paul Rodriguez can hold on to that spot through the rest of the day. But first, let's send it down to Andrew Cannon. Carlos, what was going through your mind on that run? That was crazy. Thank you. So hyped I landed it, dude. Like, I was just on survival mode inside of my head, you know? Every time I pop, I was screaming inside. Like, ah! Oh, land it. Breathe. All right, another one. Oh, land it. Woo, breathe. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you came out swinging. You got a nine on the runs. How does that make you feel as you head into the single tricks? I mean, there's definitely been times where you'll go into the single tricks and every single one of those matters, but you started it off with a nine. Straight up, yes. Um, that's the first time I get a nine in a run, so you definitely feel more comfortable going into the, the single trick section you know i felt a little more comfortable but still you need to put points on so you still got that pressure so i feel like same pressure a little more comfortable that's oh so, yeah you look like really comfortable on those kink rails what you know are, is that a normal obstacle for you or what definitely not and uh, maybe i look comfortable but i wasn't comfortable at all I, that was the first time i switch crook this thing too so i was just like i'm gonna wait when i need it and uh, thank god it worked Wow, congratulations, Carlos. Right now you're in the top spot. Fingers crossed it's going to hold. What would it mean to you to be in the finals here at the Super Crown? I would be super stoked to be in the finals, man. It's uh, such a hard cut to make, you know, top four from this event. But uh, either way, it's a nice one to watch if I don't make it. Just want to see the boys kill it. And uh, if I make it, I'll be hyped for sure. Well, congratulations, Carlos. Amazing skating right there in heat number two. And back up to you guys. Thank you, Andrew. Great attitude from Carlos Rivera. And cool to hear that he hadn't even done the trick in practice. He no, just, right? Oh, I need to do that now. I'll Going save it for it. now. When it matters. True professional. We've got Heat 3 coming up soon, but first we caught up with Gustavo Ribeiro and talked to him about the importance of skating in SLS. My name is Gustavo Ribeiro. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Portugal, Lisbon. When you are a kid, you have like a lot of dreams and I remember like when I was like 10, like dreaming like I want to skate with these guys like Pirot, Shane O'Neill, Niger and I don't know, it's just like one of my biggest dreams will be on Street League because I like competition and Street League is one of the best competitions nowadays. The first Street League that I skated was in London 2018 Man, it was fun. Like, I was so young, I was so nervous, and it was a fun time. So I, I made it to the finals, I got so stoked, I was so happy. And like, them, like, I mean, like, my first street league, I'm in the finals, you know, skating with all of these guys, with my, all of my favorite skaters. So, like, I'm, I was so stoked. I was like, I can't believe. In Salt Lake City, I didn't try the Jeff Flip Band for the whole weekend. And I tried the first one, was really bad. And then the last try, I was like, yeah, you know, or I land and I can win, or I land and at least I got the second place. So I was not stressed, I was not worried. Like, I mean, I got the second place already. So I just landed and it was the craziest feeling ever. When I found out that I won, I just started crying. Like, I was so happy. Oh, it's a dream, you know? Welcome back to Riverfront Plaza from Jacksonville, Florida. It's the 2021 SLS Super Crown World Championship presented by Karayuma. You're watching the men's last chance qualifier. Best skateboarders in the world. Trying to make a four cut. 
And now it is time to meet the skaters in heat number three. Luan Oliveira from Brazil. His last SLS final was in 2016. It's been too long. Jagger Eaton. It's going to be nice to see Jagger on this course today. A little more of a technical course, but he can adapt to anything. Hometown of Mesa, Arizona. Ryan Desenzo. Been around for a minute. SLS Pro since 2013. Looking to make his first podium this weekend. And then Shane O'Neill. Arguably, but not in this argument, the most technical skateboarder alive in the world today. He really is. You can't be, you can't be better than Shane O'Neill. Mickey Papa from Canada. Coming off a 10th place finish in the Olympics this year. He won the SLS Tour qualifier in July. That's what got him here. He's a contest killer. Now, before we kick off Heat 3, let's talk about the basics presented by Tech Deck. There are two sections to SLS. There's the line section where each skater gets 45 seconds on the course, followed by four single trick attempts. Top three scores count from any section. And the key to today's last chance qualifiers, the top four skaters advance to the final. That's a harsh cut, Jeff. A four cut, that leaves, that leaves very little room for error, if not no room for error. Start list for Heat number three. Luan Oliveira will be coming in first, followed by Jagger Eaton, Ryan Desenzo, Shane O'Neill, and Mickey Papa. Lots of talent right there. Two Canadians, Australia, USA, and Brazil. It's gonna be a good one. I'm excited to see Luan skate. I think all the crowd is too. They're screaming for him. And he's another one of these founding SLS pros going back to 2010. He got his win in 2015, New Jersey. Only front side board slide. Coming in nice and fast. Nice slide around, around a half cap no slide, 270. And Luan is so good at putting so many tricks down. Such quick feet, knows how to put a line together, has tricks for every obstacle. Solid pop, 360 flip. Going in for that switch, front side kick to the ball, doesn't quite get the catch. Was looking very good before that bail right there. <laughs> okay, if you can do a switch for a three on flat with one second left like that, I'd rather see that than some, you know, some standard gap to hop a trick almost. That was amazing. Luan's one of the only guys who does throw out like flat ground tricks in the middle of his run. I think he does plan a lot of it out. Nice front side kick flip. But then also he freestyles a little bit of it. If he decides to just switch it up at that second after he lands a trick like this 360 flip, he does. That's you know, what's fun about him. He's exciting to watch. A lot of people have a few tricks that they're really good at and they do again and again. He could do a million tricks. I mean, he could do everything. He could make the cut doing flat ground tricks. I believe that. 5.2. So the, the switch frontside flip cost him bad on that run. Jagger Eaton. Oh, the, the crowd is responding to that score. They wanted a higher score. I don't blame them, but the judges, the judges are calling it. They know what's up. Jagger eating in. Oh, big old nose grind. Nice 360 flip. Tray flip. Or just tray. <laughs> For sure. Back to an A nose grind. Fake your nose one. Showing that like transition skill as well as the street right here. Kick the backside lip slide. Crooked grind through the kink like it was nothing. Still got a little bit of time. It's covered the whole course already. Take the 50-50. Oh! Switch frontside crook. Oh, beautiful line right there from Jagger. His consistency is unbelievable. You know he's going to make his tricks. So if you're going to beat him, you have to beat him. That's one of those guys that, like... You know, if you're a Nigel Houston, you can recognize real quick. Jagger Eaton is, is going to be around a while, and he's always going to be hard to beat. 
nobody's hit in the line. We haven't really seen anybody. You know, Zion hit it for a second, but hit the uh, transition to the rail above there and the nice back zoning nose grind. Does that long crooked grind. Maintains that speed, moves on to the next trick. 8.6. Great score. Great score. Still the highest run score of the day was from Carlos Ribeiro. This is, this is up in that zone. Ryan, Ryan Desenzo in next. High speed. Nice front side blunt slide. Good form on the front side blunt. Very vertical with this board. Nice uh, sugar cane. Or a hurricane. It's just wide hover like that. It's hard to know. What to call it? Yeah. Gap the nose block. How about a sugar hurricane? There you go. That's what we'll call it. Desenzo putting it together with 10 seconds left. Just got to finish strong. He's put in a, a few really hard tricks right in the middle of that, though. Oh! Get <laughs> well, that was unfortunate. All those ripping moves and then to, you know, fall on the last second on the last one. Yeah. Unfortunate right there. See how takeoff just didn't flip right. Great run, nevertheless. High speed, packed in a lot of tricks. Switch. There's that. Switch. Sugar cane, hurricane. Hard to name that trick. Yeah, it's a bit of both. Front side kick flip. I did every so 7.9, so mind. still a really good score for Ryan Desenzo, despite the fall, which is, Take it. I think that's the right thing. That fall was right at the end. It didn't mess up his whole run. It didn't get in the way. Shane O'Neill, 2016 Super Crown Champ, say no more. Straight in with a switch flip, backside lip slide. First trick. Oh, Ryan only kick flip. Shane O'Neill, 15 seconds left right here. Clean tray flip. We make this last trick. Oh! Switch backs that tells that he still has time for another. What a run. Oh! That was exceptional. Okay. Talk about consistency. I mean, we, that, that run had it all. Skated the gap. Skated the rails, regular and switch, and Nolly flipped out of crew. Come on. No, it showed all of that technical combinations as well as the single gnarly tricks, single technical tricks. And that's what you got to do to get that high score in line. Oh, the switch back tail in the midst of all that. It was the first two tricks that I was really into. Start now, nine. 9.4. 9.4. Shane O'Neill, first ride of the day in the nine club. Just like that. So, Jeff, that is the highest line score of the year, period. And rightfully so. Props to the judges for calling that one. Spot on. Mickey Papa, he's in. Mickey usually has no problems with these. The line section, being a contest veteran, been going to contest his whole life. Always good at putting together high scoring lines. With tricks like that. Nolly front side heel flip, lip slide. Backside tail. tail, good combination, used every single obstacle on that side of the course. Nolly heel. Oh! Sweet burial heel flip. Oh, and that's time. What a run. 
The varial heel really raised the bar on that run. Like he had a good, solid run going. And then, and imagine backing off that Shane O'Neill run. That was an epic backup. Props to that. Molly heel flip lip slide right there. And then that combo. That's what I like, the combo back in and then the bench. And here's that last varial heel. Does this so smoothly. Wow. Stoke, that's a great score for him. Take a look at the current standings for this heat. Shane O'Neill up on top of this heat only. 9.4. Jagger in second. Look at those run scores. Four really high run scores. Before we move on to the single trick section. Before we do, we caught up with Jamie Foy and talked to him about growing up watching SLS and now what it's like to be in it. My name is Jamie Foy and I'm from Deerfield Beach, Florida. When I was a little kid, I watched Street League all the time. When I first saw Street League, like it was in my mind, it's like, I can do that, I'm, go I'm gonna do that. Like, I wanna be in this contest. And me and my mom would always sit down and watch it, my sisters. It's like being able to watch like a basketball game or something where it's on TV and it's for skating. So one thing that I really wanna do was skate in Street League and be out there just trying hard tricks with a big crowd surrounding you. Like, I feel like that's the thing. Like, if you're a skater, it's like the closest thing you can get to like NBA or NFL. So it's kinda like one of those feelings. My first experience was in Barcelona at the Open Qualifier. I think a couple months later when they were planning the next season or something like yeah they called me and gave me like a wild card position and I remember that because that was super cool I was like oh, Zion's in it too like yeah it's gonna be so sick like me and my like one of my best friends and we grew up watching Street League and we both you know grew up together skating and we both are out there having fun on the skate with at the skate park together with all these big heads that we've always watched skating so that's just like a super surreal experience. Growing up, I've watched Street League all the time. I mean, I still never won a trophy. So honestly, I, it'd be nice to just win a trophy like uh, one time. It'd be sick. So that's kind of just always the motivation. But I'm never too bummed because honestly, I'm always out there having a good time. I'm just glad I'm included in the whole thing, like realistically. I'm just super stoked to be in the Street League and just like, just be out there and having fun. Jamie Foy, Sodi, future legend, current legend. You'll see him coming up in heat number four. I, I fear for those rails when he comes onto the course. Yeah, it's I either him or them, them, and it's going to be them. It's going to be them. They're going to fail. He's going to win. The 2021 Super Crown course here from Jacksonville is available now for download at True Skate Official. So get on it, download it, check it out, play it, replicate some of these tricks, post them on Instagram, whatever. It's fun times. True Skate. Jeff, you want to take a look at our judges? It's a solid crew. They've got a, a heavy task. They, they, I mean, Kelly Hart, Billy Marks, Garrett Hill, Mike Moe, and Big Cat. Those are the guys. High five them when you love the scores. Sometimes, you know, send them a, a friendly DM if, if you disagree respectfully because they know it's the, you can't say like these guys don't know what to talk about even if the scores are off they've got a reason you know no, they're great, all great skaters in their own right aren't they let's give them due credit absolutely that gets away from the land right there single trick section here we go heat number three jagger eaton coming in next He's in 12th place, coming off a great run score of an 8.6. And we've seen it. Jagger's just going to put down trick after trick. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's a start, switch back nose blunt. Jeff. Difficult trick, especially on that wide rail also. Easy to stick. A little more sticky than a normal rail or hopper might be for that kind of trick, I would say. Gets a shoulder over it. Locks in nicely. Look at that control. Nine club! 
9.0 switch back nose blunt. Jagger Eaton moving on up. He's an eighth. Ryan Desenzo. Ryan Desenzo in for his first of four. So it's coming in. Switch. Oh! Switch 180 to Crooks. Perfect. Another good speed, too. So Ryan had a 7.9 in the run section, building on that here with a 7.4. Remember, P Rod is in fourth with a 21.8. That is a 7.2, 7.3 average. So that's kind of the score you're going to be looking for. Shane O'Neill is in, coming off of a 9.4 line. Oh. Going straight for the throat with that big spin back tail. Still got a few more single attempts. Mickey, final skater, first of four single trick attempts. Oh, gone for the nollie here for the front side board slide. Back to the top of the order. Second of four tries here, Luan Oliveira. Looking for a make. Oh! He just kick flipped over the rail straight and tweaked it when he I, caught it. That's cool, right? Like, it's just a totally different choice of tricks. You can kick flip over the rails, like, at an angle, but to hit it dead on, legend. Jagger Eaton, it's a guy. Oh! <laughs> he squeaked that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jeff, you just, you're going to get makes from Jagger. So he's going to have the scores. You have to beat Jagger Eaton. He's not falling off. <laughs> he is hanging on that one. And yet at the same time, look, there's no toe drag on the floor. There's nothing that's sketchy. It's just a little bit of a shaky roll away. So he had an 8-6 in the run, a 9 for the switchback nose blind. What's this? So 4.3 is going to send P-Rod home. Judge is really thinking this one out. Rightfully so. A lot is on the line. P-Rod's trip to the final is on the line here. 8.1. P-Rod goes home. Vincent Milou is now on the bubble in fourth with a 25.1 overall score. So those top four scores, they're high. Desenzo's in. Desenzo's out. So we'll look to Shane O'Neill for his next try. Shane had the 9.4 in the run section. Of course, everybody needs three solid scores. So he needs two makes out of the next three. Oh, and he gets it. Big spin. Backside tail slide fakey. Shane giving the crowd what they came out here for. Man, building on that 9.4, that's going to be a high score. Yeah, so it's going to come down to this. If Shane makes one more trick after this one, we can be pretty certain he'll be making that top four. Because when Shane's making his tricks, Shane's going places. And when Shane's confident and on his stuff, it's a beautiful thing. He were anyone else competing against him. Yeah. Beautiful dismount. Coming to Fakey, showing that level of technicality above everybody. 8.8. 8. 
Shane O'Neill moving up into ninth. So one more from him. He'll be looking really solid for the final. Mickey Papa on deck. He's in 14th, looking for his first single trick score. Didn't quite catch the board there. Underflipped it a little bit, caught his heels. So Mickey's gonna have to look to his next two. Not just look to him, but stay on. Luan Oliveira, back to the top of the order here. Third of four tries. Oh, yeah, and there it is. Hey, bionic. It's like, the speed that, that which he flips his board, though, is something to behold. Look how quick that flick happens. Straight over the hover. The only person to escape the, the park like that. Yeah. To even think of that. Yeah, awkward. You've got to have that flip, very fast flick almost before you've reached the height of your kickflip. 6.5. Didn't get much for creativity. But that was a beautiful kickflip. All right, Jagger Eaton, he's sitting in second place. An 8.3 or better moves him into the lead. Oh, going for the kick flip front side blonde slide. Sitting in a good spot though. Moving on to Ryan Descent. He's got a 7-9 and a 7-4. Trying to build on that. Uh, going for the kickflip front nose blunt. Looking a little dejected after coming off on that. Shane O'Neill. He's in ninth. Oh, only in a contest. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Yeah, no, I mean... That could have been me. It happens. When you say it happens to the best of them, you just saw it happen to the best of them. Oh, okay. What? What? That's why. That's why. My jaw just dropped, hit the floor, bounced back up, and hit me in the teeth. So that counts, that's gonna count. And all right, let's put it this way. Vincent Nalu is on the bubble with a 25.1. Shane O'Neill is gonna post his third score. And anything higher than a seven is gonna be bad news for Aurelia. And there you go, 8.1. Shane O'Neill in first place. Now Carlos Rivero in second, Jagger in third, Aurelian Giroux on the bubble, and he killed it. Mickey Papa, pressure is on here 100%. Great run score, needs two makes. Needs to start with this one right now. Yeah, we need to see Mickey at his technical best right here. We need to see a hammer. Flip front side board slide. That's Mickey at his technical best. No sketch whatsoever as well. Some with speed, authority. Yeah. Look at that. So he keeps his hopes alive here. That's going to be a big score. He had an 8.4 in the line section and then two falls. But now this with one try still to go. So he backs up that line score. And that's going to set him up for his last attempt. He's going to need an 8.8 .8 next time. All right. Final attempts here in heat number three of four. Luan Oliveira is just going for it. Just, just full speed, flat ground, high, backside kick flip all the way down to the flat.
Jagger Eaton in third place, and 8-8 eight, eight moves him into first. Oh, wow! Kickflip frontside blunt slide. Jagger Down the hubba. getting it done again and again. So Jagger's lowest score right now is an 8-1. Anything better than that is going to help him give him a cushion with heat four coming up. Oh, it's going to be there, Paul. That's an 8.1 all day. Plus. You heard it, guys. That's the 2000 Sodi telling you that. 8.6. 8.6. Gnarly score. That was epic. That was epic. Descent. Wow, it's really changing in those top four spots, isn't it? Yeah, and Aurelian still hanging on to the dream right there with the 25.5 and fourth. Desenzo is doing this one for the homies. Yes, the homies! There you go, kickflip front nose blunt by Desenzo. Visible replay, let's take another look at that one. Beautiful execution by Ryan, the frontside kickflip nose blunt slide. You can see this very tasty catch, nice lock in. Like slid the whole length of the hopper too. Eight point five to Senzo. Red Dragons are partying tonight. Eight point five party. Shane O'Neill on deck, sitting in first place with a 26.3, trying to drop an 8.1. That's his lowest score. Oh, trying to raise the stakes. Shane O'Neill looking very solid to advance to tomorrow's Super Crown final. I think where he belongs after skating like we just saw. Mickey Papa, final attempt here. Needs an 8.3 or better to bump Aurelian Giroux out of the final. It's not going to do it. Aurelian survives heat number three with one heat still to go. Two skaters out of heat number three just moved into the top four. We got Shane O'Neill and Jagger Eaton. Not just the top four, top two. This is shaping up to be one serious last chance qualifier here from Jacksonville. Look at your top four. They will be moving on to the final unless Heat Four can change all that. We've got Felipe Moda and Kelvin Hoffler coming up still. So it's not over. Really, Giroux can't get too comfortable. What do you think, Jeff? Do you have any predictions for these skaters coming up in Heat Four? Do you see. Who do you think has the best chance moving into that top four and sending any of these guys home? It's looking like the more technical guys, right, are, are, are doing better. Mm -hmm. So I would say from the next heat that we have coming, the Felipe Moda, mm -hmm. maybe Lucas Rubello, but these rails, Jamie Foy, are you kidding me? Yeah. We're in Florida and there's rails there and Jamie's about <laughs> to skate in front of everybody. It's going to be bonkers. Good call, good call. Let's check in with Andrew Cannon, who's standing down with our leader, Shane O'Neill. All right, Shane, you have done this for a very long time. You know the scoring, you know the tricks, but this is a little bit of a different course. Talk about strategy heading in. How much did you adjust by watching the skaters? Yeah, actually, the first and second heat, I had to pay attention to kind of what scores because, like you said, this, this uh, course is a lot different. It's just really kind of one big section, so I really just took the things that I thought I could skate and uh, I saw people skating similar things and put it all together. I mean there, there was there's a lot of options on this course I mean it looks smaller than usual in the sense of it's just one section but that makes it easier because usually you have to do one two one two one two all the way but now it's just one 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 basically some people do one two but you know. 
Talk to us a little about that line. I mean, man, you came out swinging it and absolutely put it down. It was a 9.4, if I'm remembering correctly. No, how 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 does that make you feel heading into those single tricks when you post a score like that? Yeah, that feel that makes me feel better. Also, I know I've never switched flip back lift in the beginning of my run, so that was like a little nerve wracking because usually I would do like more of a consistent trick, like a switch back lip or a tray flip or something. Um, but it worked, so then I was just going from there. I'm happy with that, yeah. So, you know, when we were in Tampa, we were talking, and you were saying, hey, you haven't been focusing as much on contests. And then you came out, you, you crushed it, obviously, in Tampa. You skated really well in Havasu. Do you think the mindset makes a huge difference for you if you're not putting too much pressure on yourself? Um, not really. I think, honestly, the way that the formats are these days with the contests, it's like we're all kind of doing the same tricks always. So I used to spend a lot of time practicing those tricks, and I'd come here, and if I mess them up, it's like I might as well just practice a few days before the contest and then spent my time you know filming and street skating and doing more more of that instead of like i always used to try to separate it street skating time of the year then a couple contests you know and like stick to it but now it's working to just skate as is and we're all doing the same stuff anyway because of the the format you know we have to land stuff we're not going to be doing the best stuff we can ever do that's just the way it goes well an impressive performance out here today super excited hopefully you're making it through into the finals thanks so much this last heat though they could all get in there that you know they can, so we'll see. But I'm happy anyway, though. Just to land stuff and just, like, be doing decent, you know, I'm happy. Yeah. As you should be. Well, congrats, Shane. Great skating. All right, now we're going to check in with Felipe Moda on what it's like to be skating in Street League. Once again, big shout out to you. I felt SLS was a dream, like, when I was, like, seven years old. I was, like, my favorite skaters, Luan, Pirad, Shane O'Neill, Nigel, all those dudes, like, be raping on a contest, and I was, like, dude, like, I want to be on it one day. Now, like, seven years later, like, first I got invited to the qualifiers, and skating the SLS qualifier was super sick. It was my first time skating in a street league. I was already happy just to get invited. I was like, no matter what, I'm going to do my most. And then I couldn't get to the top three, got fourth place. But I was happy, like, I was proud of me. And now I got invited to, like, SLS skating with the pros. They're all, all the best dudes, like, I've been watching since, like, seven years old. I just feel, like, so happy. I can't really explain that. It's like I'm realizing a dream just to be on it. My challenge for now is like make to the finals. I, I don't know how it would feel like if I won the SLS. It would probably like me and my dad would go crazy like because we never thought about that. Like, you know, just to be on it is, is like a win. Tô realizando um sonho agora e mal consigo esperar para participar no City League. Welcome back to Jacksonville, Florida and the 2021 SLS Super Crown World Championship presented by Karayuma. And it has been quite a day so far. Heat, Heat 4 is waiting in the wings with Shane O'Neill currently in the lead. Now it's time to meet the skaters for Heat number 4. First skater in will be Felipe Moda. Placed fourth in the SLS Tour Qualifier this year. He's 14 years old and is a skate prodigy. Next we have Kelvin Hoffler. Kelvin is no stranger to being on the podium in a rip in Street League events. 28 years old from Brazil. And Lucas Rebello, another brand new SLS Pro this year. He got second at the Tour Qualifier earlier this year. That's what got him here, Lucas Rebello. And then we have Jamie Foy, Florida local. The guy we've all been wanting to watch skate these rails today in every part of the course. 25 years old from Deer Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, Deshaun Jordan, one of 10 skaters to ever win an SLS stock. Did that back in 2017, Chicago. Those are your skaters in heat number four. The final heat of the day here in the last chance qualifier. Everybody trying to make the top four cut to skate against 
tomorrow's pre-qualified tour leaders. Here's your start order. Felipe, Kelvin, Lucas. Three Brazilians coming in, followed by Jamie Foy and Deshaun Jordan. Doing it for USA. Five skaters in heat for Youngest skateboarder in the event right here. I mean, way younger, too. And 360 flip to start it out. Oh. Now you gotta feel, you gotta figure he'd be nervous skating with his idols. You know, we saw the, the segment on him. It's a big deal. But yeah. he skates like a pro, like he's been around for a decade. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Kickflip back set tells at the level of technicality as well on this kid too. I have a feeling we're gonna see a lot of this kid in the future. You know? At that kind of age where every single day he's going to be learning tricks. Every day. He'll right. put front side board, board slide. We could, we could be seeing him for the next 20 years easy. Yeah, he's one of those rare kids that just has it. There's that solid 360 flip. And then that beautiful kick flip backside tail slide coming out forward. The consistency. But he did look a little bit shaky. Yeah, he you know, did. He had a fall From watching him skate before, he looked a little bit shaky. Hopefully, mm -hmm. he can uh, remove that, remove to the next single trick section. Run score is a 4.9, and we know those top four now. That that is that's heavy. Those are big scores. Aurelian has a 25.5 overall. On deck, Kelvin Hoffler, 2015 Super Crown champion. He's always putting himself in the running. Starting off with a big gap to backside lip slide. Solid nose blunt stall. And the backside nose blunt. Starting off really strong, Kelvin, nolly nose grind. Five oh fakie. A little bit of tranny skills. Wow. Yeah, backside tail set. I don't know how he had the speed to do that. I he know did. he bare, he came out of that pivot fake. He was such a small amount of speed, so strong to do that. <laughs> Amazing. Kelvin knows how to put a run together. Oh, how did he land that? <laughs> He had to land it. That's it. He knew that, like, I have to roll. I, I made the whole line. I'm going to bail this. No, I'm going to make this. <laughs> that was amazing. But he did slip out of the one. He nose grind into nose slide. And the judges will note that, though. That's still the same as doing the trick sketchy. You know, very sketchy. Right. Yeah. This was clean, nose though. Grind. Balanced. Yeah, great line. The only thing I'll say is there wasn't really a lot of flip in the board. There's the kick, kick flip, crooked grind, but there wasn't a lot of like technical tricks, so to say, if you want to put it up against Shane O'Neill and who came before. I did love that slow motion cat back tail, though. So the average score needed to move into fourth is an 8-6. That, that's, that's a high average. Judges taking their time on this one. I don't blame them. Nine club, 9.1 for Kelvin. That's the start he needed. On deck, Lucas Ribello. We saw him in Havasu skating in the final. He can get there, trying to get back there. Strong start. Hanging in there on the tray flip. Oh! Backside nolly, 180 nose grind. There's a kick flip. Yes, 
Gaps and nose on the slide. Wow, Lucas putting together a serious run here. Oh, classic right there. Five seconds left. Oh, I think he. Uh, yeah, this won't count. Out. Oh. Great run. So a little poorly timed just at the finish. I mean, I hate to say that because he did great skateboarding, but it kind of fizzled out there, kind of ran out of time, and then bailed the trick after time. But a lot of great tricks. Gap to backside lip fakie to start the line out. And there's that nolly 180 fakie nose grind. Very fast movement in the nolly. And that 270 lip to fakie. Eight point five, so a great score for Lucas Ribello. That's a tenth of a point below the average needed to make the four cut. Though keep that in mind. Jamie Foy on deck. 2018 Thrasher Skater of the Year. Jamie Foy, handrail destroyer. Yes. Backside over crook. Backside nose grind, whatever you want to call it. Frontside feeble. So a little tall tail slide fakie. Tweaked out heel flip. Oh, solid backside 50 50 on the bar above the quarter pipe. Into kick flip, backside lip slide. Slow it down right now and just get that last trick in. Oh! No! Yeah. After all those hammers. I mean, he was, he was gonna seal the deal with the shove it out of the back tail. I just, I love that he did the back 50 on the floating bar. Cause, no, you know, very few people are messing with that. Cause it's deadly. And, and in a run chock full of everything else, Jamie's great at. Absolutely. Like that. Great at pretty much everything. Like front side feeble. And there's that high tail slide fakey. And then that radical use of the quarter pipe onto the flat bar, which might have looked easy. It wasn't. It was sketchy and deadly. 8.0, so a great score. He would have got a huge score if he'd have made the back tail shot. Okay, Deshaun Jordan on deck. Coming off of a second place finish last month in Lake Havasu. Never looking better. I mean, he is, Deshaun is skating like a champion. Cavalarial backside lip slide of faking. That's not a trick I would have chosen my line on that hole, but that's wide. A lot of room for error on that one. Oh, going for the 270 lip faking. A trick he does in his sleep. It's going to be final trick here if he hustles it out. Signature to Sean. Oh. So, a huge finish. Had a fall in the run. Take a look back. Visible replay. Nice high gap over the nose blunt slide. And there's that cap the backside lip slide. Look at that. Going so fast. 360 flip 50 50. Seven point two. That that all hurt him. Remember, eight point six is the average score to crack into the top four. That's what it's gonna take. No holds barred then. Now nah, you gotta go all in. So check out streetleague.com for news, schedules, tickets, athlete info, and more. Head on over there, streetleague.com.
Heat standings after the line section. Kelvin Hoffler, no surprise, up on top with a 9.1, followed by Lucas Ravello and Jamie Foy running out the top three. Those are the standings for Heat 4 only. Shane O'Neill is still currently the leader here today. a look at Deshaun Jordan. We sat down with Deshaun and asked him what he's been up to. These past two years, I've just kind of been kicking it, like sitting out the way, trying to stay healthy mentally and physically. Um, I kind of used all that downtime as prep time and just kind of like, it allowed me to kind of regroup and just get back on track like mentally, you know what I mean? I, I felt like I needed that break. I think the new format is dope. Like, I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna be super cutthroat. You can no longer play the safe game anymore. It's like, you gotta come correct, you know what I mean, throughout the whole contest, you know, to secure any type of possibility of getting up in the podium or winning. So, a crazy growth in just skating, you know? Like, I think it's gonna be crazy stuff happening. The skateboard's gonna be amazing, and it's gonna continue to do that, like, with this new format. I'm stoked to be a part of the tour again. I'm looking forward to like all the good times and you know good energy and you know great skating. That's good. That's gonna happen amongst every skateboarder that's you know in the contest. And so I'm stoked to just like have that energy going and like feed off of each other, push each other skateboarding, and just you know what I mean like have a good time. That feeling of just like getting a first place trophy at an SLS is just like it's unreal because there's so much great skateboarding going on and like. It can literally be anybody's game and anybody's day. So it's like to make it through and like get one, it's a, a overall just like a great achievement. My motivation for the 2021 championship tour is to just skate as hard as I can. You know what I mean? To keep a good vibe, curated, good energy, you know what I mean? Have fun with the homies. And, you know what I mean? Like I said again, leave no doubt. Skateboarding has been brought to you by Karyuma. Old school shoes, new school epics. Tech Deck. Start small, go big. Tech Deck. By Athletic Brewing. Proud partner of Street League Skateboarding. By True Skate. True control, true skill, true skate. We're back. This is the last chance qualifier. Heat number four here from Jacksonville. Felipe Moda will be coming in for his first of four best trick attempts. Felipe Moda fans in the house. The young one, SLS rookie. into that kick to the back tail. Right, it zero, Felipe Mota. Next up we have Kelvin. Kelvin coming off the 9.1. As we talked about, 8.6, that's the average needed. So Kelvin just has to keep it going. You know he's good for it. Kelvin getting hyped. Here we go. Oh! Going straight for the big moves. Kick foot back lip. A little bit sticky. Might need a little bit of wax on that. Looked like it did actually stick a little. Lucas Ribello had an 8.5 in the runs. First of four. Waxing all those wheel bite areas. Make sure. Those wheels rub against the board, he still rolls. Oh! <laughs> How did he make that? <laughs> okay. This, I want to see the slow mo. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I want to see a slow mo right now. That was incredible. Perfectly done right there, and right at the dismount. Just kind of flopped it out. 
big old 10 foot gap the backside nose blunt slide and <laughs> hey a little bit of a hand drag i'll take it i'll yeah. take that i can't believe he made that so he had the line score of an 8.5 8.6 average is what it takes to get the job done here 7.1 the sketch factor cost big and the rule is he got scored for that trick he can't go back to it and clean it up it's off the table he's got to move on jamie foy in next coming off of a run score of an eight even Frontside crook grand shove, a little sketchy. Might have been a little bit of a toe drag, hand down, but my goodness. Just, I mean, we talked about it. The front crook through the double kink is enough. The shove out? Yeah. Like the backside shove out like that? He popped over to the other side almost. Watch his body weight right here. It starts shifting right there. That's what got him, because he was leaning too far down with his head dipped. Way to go, hanging in there, Matt. It's gotta be tough to score, cause such a hard trick, but real sketchy, 7.9. Still solid, but not in the top four cut making range. Deshaun Jordan, coming off a 7.2. That's the first of four single trick attempts for every skater here in heat number four. Back to the top of the order, Felipe Moda. He had a fall on his first try. His run was not the score he needed, he, so he essentially needs to put down three heavy tricks in a row, starting now. is that kick flip backside tail slide shove it fast flick good lock in clean shove it there's another angle there as you can see the speed of that flick look how quick it locks in high up wow okay so doing what he needs to do there Booing. The crowd is bummed. The, judge, the judges are being judged themselves right now. That might have been a little low. Shoes on the other foot, huh, guys? What do you think, Jeff? What, what would be the what would be the reason for the eight? I don't know. That looked like a mid eights to me, or high eight, somewhere in the. All right. I'm Kelvin sure had the nine one point. in the run section. He fell on the kickflip back lip on his first single trick attempt. He's not falling again today, I don't think. Kick flip backside lip slide. Huge one. Big old gap to kick flip back lip. Just the level of confidence. I mean, the, the level of confidence that it takes to try it, but just you could see that he was going to make it the whole time. Perfect. Nice angles, dude, lip fillers. Good job. Very solid kick to the backside lip slide. It's crazy. His feet were pretty sketchy in the backside lip slide, but by the time he landed, it was 8-7. See, he's keeping it going. He had the 9-1, now he's got the 8-7. He set himself up. He's got three more tries to try to get Aurelian Giroux out of the final and put Kelvin Hoffler in. All right, Lucas Rubello on deck in 15th. Oh! No, 
Dolly Cab to switch back tail. That that's just one of those tricks. You know who does it? Yuto does it, and now Lucas. That's that's it. And he did it perfect. So he had the 8-5 in the run. He had the 7.1 on his first try. Now he's backing it up here. Nolly 270 switchback tail. What are the judges going to think of that? 8.7. That kind of trick always scores high because of the blind element. Yeah. Blind side element, you don't know where you're going. It's hard to always, you know, push in and lock in consistently for some, most people. Most people. Jamie Foy. Florida loves Jamie Foy. And that's why. Fakie Crook. Fake Yolly over to Fake Switch, switch Crook over yeah. on the other side or Foy grind. He Foy grinded through the double kick. Fake Yolly, Fakey 5 0, kind of pinched over. Gets in right at the top of the rail. Helps it out. Classic Jamie Foy. Jamie getting it done. Deshaun Jordan. Trying to stay on here. Oh, not quite. So that's two falls in a row for Deshaun Jordan, meaning he's got to make it all happen in his last two tries. It's going to put a lot of heat on him. Those last two goes. So Lucas Ribello moving up the board. And speaking of, we caught up with him for his thoughts on skating here at SLS. My name is Lucas Ribello. I'm from Fortaleza, Brazil. When I was 11 years old, I started skating and I heard about the SLS. I was like, wow, this contest is like amazing. This is like my dream right now, you know. I want to. Keep skating, have fun, maybe one day be that ski with everyone. I was talking with my friends when Lake Havas too and I was thinking about that. I was like, damn, I'm living my dream. That's what I'm doing right now, living my dream. Like I remember when I was watching TV and right now I'm here skating with everyone. The craziest thing was watching Pirod like in person skating in SLS. Like it is not TV, it's like real life right now. <laughs> that feeling to be on the first stop in SLS was it was insane. I was I was feeling like I was dreaming. I was nervous, yeah, for sure. I was excited to skate. Lake Havasu was, I was more confident, for sure. I was like, all right, that's my second stop. So like, I know how that works a little bit now. I skated good. I was happy with myself. So that means it was like, good. When you say super count, sounds bigger than, you know, like, so that means like, wow. I gotta be ready for this. Super kind of like watch it, uh, World Cup, like Barcelona versus uh, Real Madrid. It's, it's like the best of the best. It's like insane finals. You will see something really crazy there for sure. If you want something, have your dream, think about like a lot of like possibilities to make it happen, you know? Be positive always and make it happen. Do your best. Good story. Keeping it going. Team number four here in the last chance qualifier. Back to the top of the order. Felipe Moda, the 14 year old, is in 16th place. He needs some big scores coming up here. That's going to be up to the judges, Paul, on that one. Let's see. He'll flip back side, tell side. That would have been one that get a high score. Yeah, so he's he's gonna be out essentially of the top four. Kelvin Hoffler is not out. He needs a 7.8 in one of his next two attempts to move into the top four. Aurelien Giroux from France, who was our first skater in today in heat one. He's in fourth place. He'll be the first one out. If Calvin puts down a 7 8 of Cat back tail 
Jeff. 7.8, does that get it done? That's gonna be right on it, I would say, yes. Yep, on the call, that's right on there. But we'll see, see how the judges feel about that. I mean, we have seen that trick a lot from Kelvin, so they're a little desensitized when you see the same trick after an act, you know? Mm -hmm. But still, can't turn your nose up at a cavalry backside tail slide fakey. And he does them so well, too. He really does. So Aurelien Giraud from France has to be watching this one closely. Jeff, you nailed it. Right in the range, just good enough. 7.9, Kelvin moves into fourth. Aurelien Giraud goes home. Lucas Rebello on deck. He's an eight. Trying to get rid of a 7.1. Actually, none of that matters. He needs an 8.6 or better. Oh, 270 look fakey. Okay. I mean, let's uh, it's a 10 foot gap going 360 before he lands on the rail, right? Like yeah. flipping to it's one thing, but spinning to it yeah. at that speed, low to the ground, gnarly. That was early. I guess the only question is, is it an 8-6 or better? Look at the wrap around the you can see right here. They had to do a little bit later wrap around to delay it so he didn't rotate too early. Gnarly is right. Yeah, gnarly is it. That's exactly what that was. 8.7. Oh, I guess just. What? He does it, so he actually moves into third place, putting himself in a great spot. Now Carlos Ribeiro is on the bubble, and Kelvin Hoffler just got bumped out. That's, wow. that was a big shakeup. That trick changed everything just now. Jamie Foy looking for a 9-3. Yeah, at that point, you've just got to try the hardest trick you can think of that you know you you can actually do. All right, Deshaun Jordan coming in next. He is not in the running for the top four. See what he does anyway. Just for skateboarding. <laughs> Can we get him back in the running? Come on. Come on. That was amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing, Paul. There's a lot going on there. You know, it's not a super long rail, but it's not super low rail neither. So to spin that much, look at that. Bigger flip, the front board faking. And then with that element of you could stick because it's a wide metal hover and it has been sticking. Yeah. Beautifully done. That's not a nine. I'm going home. I'm going home. That's not a nine. Ah, nine club. You Love can it. stay here. Oh, thank goodness for that. Uh, nicely done. 9.1. Look at it one more time, shall we? Look at the drop down the board. Whole board flat on that wide metal hover into fakie. One of the best tricks of the day that we've seen today. Incredible. Final tries. Felipe Moda can't advance, but he can still give us some great skateboarding. And we've got Kelvin on the bubble too, so we'll see if we're gonna have any more adjustments here. So he had that right then. He'll flip back that tail slide. Great to see 14-year-old kid out there giving the SLS pros a run for their money. New blood coming in hot. Watch out. So, All of you watch out him. He's coming in real hot. Kelvin Hoffler.
is in fifth place. He needs an 8-1. That's what it comes down to. Carlos Ribeiro, fellow Brazilian, is in fourth. He'll be the first one out. If Calvin makes something, gets an 8-1 or better. Let's see. I'll tell you what, he's done it in the past. She is no stranger to these situations at three Oh, there you go, Gap. Kick, flip, front, lip. He's, he's feeling hyped, relieved, juiced up. He's laughing, high fives from the bros. Yeah, Kelvin. So now it's up to the judges. I don't think he could have done that any better. And he slid a good way on it too. Very clean. That's going to get a good score, right? 8.7. The judges see it when, it when tricks are done, they're done really well, you know? And that one was done exceptionally well. Now, Lucas Ribello just got bumped to fourth. Carlos Ribeiro is out. Anything better than an 8.5 helps Lucas. But a 9.2 seals the deal, puts him in first. Frontside 270 to frontside no slide. Okay, so he was trying to get rid of an 8.5. That should do it. Is that 9.2 within within reach? Yeah. Okay. It's within reach. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Wouldn't want to be the judge. Look at the rip on that 270 before he locks it down. Just about gets it in there. <laughs> he almost ran out of hubba. <laughs> There you go! 9.3 moves Lucas Rebello into first place. Jagger Eaton moves down into fourth. With only two skaters still to go. The question is... Yes. Can Jagger get bumped out or not? We'll see, we'll see. Jamie Foy, okay, here we go. 9.7 is what he needs. Now, if he does this kickflip, front crook, down the gap to rail. He can do it, Jamie, you can do this. He can do this, this could happen right now. Oh, oh man. So that is going to be it. Deshaun Jordan still the skate, but he cannot catch the top four. Jeff, what a show of, the, of skateboarding here today. It's been insane. Our top four is set. Jagger Eaton just squeezed in there. He made it. Take a look there. The names up on top in gold are skating tomorrow. Lucas Ribello, Calvin Hoffler, Shane O'Neill, and Jagger Eaton. Now let's send it down to Andrew Cannon. All right, Lucas, you're out there. You got a 9.2. You're in fourth place. Why do you go so hard? on that last trick and get that 9-3? Uh, I mean, I was still waiting for Jamie Foy to do his trick, so I was like, I don't want to depend from Jamie or no, you know, I want to do what I want to do. And I was feeling to do all you back tail, or I don't know, all you pro nose, depends what you call. And I was like, I want to do that. I was feeling good to do it. So I was like, I just go for it. That's amazing. How does it feel? Is this going to be your first Super Crown final? How excited are you? I can't believe it. 
the only thing I it's crazy I'm just leaving my dream over here it's crazy like to uh, be skating all those people and made a finals that's insane for me well congratulations man well deserved back to you guys Thank you very much. Now let's take a look at Ryan Desenza with the mob grip catch of the day. There it is. Kickflip front nose blunt. Desenzo. Mob grip catch of the day. Let's take a look at the super crown season standings right there. All right, this is your start list for tomorrow. Jagger Eaton will be coming in first, followed by Shane O'Neill, then Kelvin Hoffler, Lucas Ribello, and then the season leaders, Gustavo Ribeiro, Alex Midler, Felipe Gustavo, and Nigel Houston. It is gonna be a great day tomorrow. So congratulations to all the skaters for making it through to tomorrow's final. And for everybody here at SLS, I'm Paul Zitzer, signing off for Jeff Rowley and Andrew Cannon. We'll see you tomorrow from Jacksonville.